Drake Music Scotland logo in orange appears over a black background then fades out. The Live Life Aberdeenshire logo with a geometric, colourful heart in the middle of the text fades in and out. Logos for the Youth Music Initiative, shaped like a guitar pick, and Creative Scotland fade in and out. The Doctor Who Police TARDIS appears over a swirling space vortex and spins into the background. Doctor Who in Aberdeenshire text whirls into focus and takes over the screen. The words Aboyne Primary, Alfred Academy, Anna Ritchie School, and Karen Hill School appear from the space vortex, followed by Ellen Academy, Ellen Primary, St Andrew's School, and Westfield School. The words dance in front of the screen before zooming out of shot. A hand-drawn planet emerges from a galaxy with golden buildings, green trees, and a blue sky. It slowly rotates on its axis. A purple figure, an alien, appears from the left, suddenly joined by its friends and they circle the planet, all slowly approaching its borders. The planet disappears, and a new planet, in soft pinks and murky greens, spin across the screen. The words, Westfield School, Aridius, appear at the bottom. Strange planets, moons, and creatures zip across the galaxy, floating by the stars, rising and falling in time with music. The scene suddenly changes to an underwater shot, an ocean with blue and green lines penciled across it. A green creature, almost like a seahorse, wobbles in from the right, joined by a blue, whirly shell. A new creature, a white and green beast that looks like a beaver, paddles smoothly across the top of the sea. A busy scene now, with many creatures, this time on land. Are these Maya beasts? The sky is pink and fiery, it must be hot here, but the shapes are cold and silvery. This looks like a civilization of some kind, with lots of figures moving through the landscape. A floating square grey beast floats up and down, its face smiling. We are transported to a green, natural landscape with heavy clouds above it, with what could be the busy scene below. A tiny figure emerges from the background, growing larger and larger. It is shaped like a star, but black, with sharp teeth and hollow eyes. It wriggles to hide behind a hill, then to the front of the screen menacingly, and explodes into a huge green dinosaur with an eruption of green scales that fall to the ground. The dinosaur blinks and raises its arms threateningly, then folds in on itself and explodes into two huge green dinosaurs with another eruption of green scales that fall down towards the city. They blink and raise their arms as if to roar, the scales dissolving on the ground, massive against the landscape. We are back in the sea, the seahorse peacefully floating in the current. The shell and beaver creatures return too, swimming calmly behind the seahorse. We zoom out to the galaxy, Small moons flying past the planet, which fades further and further away into the distance. A new galaxy appears, full of colourful planets, suns and stars with the words Alfred Academy, Cheetah Planet. The sun spins, and the planets zoom one by one to the front. They are pastel pinks, blues, and greens. One looking like Earth, with green continents and a blue sea. We go into this planet and see three cheetahs on the surface, 
under a fiery hot sky and burning sun, moving around on the rocky ground. The cheetahs have thick spotted fur, golden eyes, and very sharp fangs. Red clouds and comets race by the burning sun. One of the cheetahs turns its head from side to side, maybe looking for something. Another one moves forwards, aware of the position of the first. It tilts its head. We see the last cheetah. It moves too, tilting its head and communicating with them, both, trotting towards them. What could they be saying? We zoom back out to the blue and green planet in the colourful galaxy. It moves slowly into the background as the music swells. And then shatters into six jagged pieces, slowly drifting apart, revealing a strange meteor behind it. The words Ellen Academy, Hespero, appear on screen. We move through a dark purple entrance to see rotating shapes, a planet and moons. Ominously, we get closer and closer to this planet. We are transported to a magical sky of pinks and purples, a strange orange plant in the center of the screen, a figure with purple hair, a long coat and a face mask, perhaps a human or humanoid woman, stands beside it. She extends an arm up and down, and as if by magic, a purple scooter-like shape appears in front of her. She gets onto the scooter and moves down, transported smoothly off screen. The orange plant ripples in the heat. We move to a grey building, the centre is shaped like a cross, skulls lining the walls. The person on her purple scooter descends from above into this new place and runs off screen. An odd creature with a yellow crown and blue hair comes out of the cross and walks slowly past the skulls, followed by another similar looking creature. We zoom in to them walking, round pink arms moving uncomfortably up and down. Looking back at the cross, there are four of these creatures, all slowly moving their arms from side to side, waiting. We zoom in even closer on one of them. They are terrifying, scratchy, penciled figures with two wide, smiling expressions. Zooming out again, all the creatures walk backwards into the opening of the cross. The purple-haired person with the face mask quickly walks toward the cross from the left and one of the blue-haired creatures with the crown sees her and runs away from the cross towards us. The purple-haired figure chases them. The scary crown creature moves quickly. We follow the chase throughout the building. Its friends come out of the cross and start running behind the purple-haired person. too quick and eventually they catch up with her and jump on her with an explosion of smoke. The purple haired figure with the mask manages to escape and runs away with arms wildly waving in the air, getting back on her purple scooter transport with the clown creatures hot on her heels, zooming back to the surface and finally sprinting past the orange plant on off screen. The scary crown creatures retreat, walking ominously backwards again, 
and to the opening of the cross. We zoom out to the spinning planet, moons revolving around it, tiny pinpricks of stars in the background. We retreat through the dark purple doors and far away from the now distant planet. In a turquoise galaxy filled with trillions of stars, a blue and yellow planet flashes across the sky. The words St. Andrew's School, the land of emotions, appear on the screen. Several planets that look like Earth, with blue water and green continents, zoom past. A final Earth planet slowly emerges from the background in the center of the screen and grows closer to us. We are transported to an underwater scene with a friendly looking octopus, waving seaweed and multicolored fish type creatures gently floating in the ocean's depths. A turtle meanders about, calmly exploring its surroundings. A new scene, a green park area with gray path pops up. A stick man is smiling, waving to some robots who are on the path. One of them is multicolored, hiding behind a tree, whilst the other, a square grey figure, is walking down the path toward the man. A yellow smiley face flashes up from the walking square robot, and it pauses next to the man, flashing the yellow smiley face again, before continuing walking. Away from the path, a new robot with circular legs and another smiley face sticker on its body wheels into the nature. It pauses, and the yellow smiley face flashes again. Is this how they communicate? before continuing on the path. A multicolored robot peers out from behind a tree and we see the square robot following the circle robot. The square robot flashes its own smiley face again and another multicolored robot peeks out to smile from behind another tree. The square robot flashes a warning sign, a triangle with an exclamation mark on it, something is wrong. The square robot moves to approach four multicolored robots who are standing around a pond. One of them looks like it has been crying, two are smiling and one has a blank expression. The circle robot is on the grassy path ahead of the square robot. They both flash their warning signs, and the multicolored robots frantically move their arms. Are they waving? Warning? Back in the turquoise galaxy, meteorites and moons circle the planet as it rotates on its axis. The words Aboyne Primary, Duchamp 331, appear on the screen. We are in a new part of space, again with trillions of bright stars. A yellow sphere, perhaps a moon, with lines etched into it, rises into view and slowly rotates. Two spaceships soar across the screen, circling the moon, engines flashing with fiery fuel, and are joined by a third spacecraft. A new, massive ship, bigger than the moon itself, drifts in from the right and gracefully out to the left. We zoom in to the moon's surface, into pale yellow ground with brown speckles, and see a spacecraft with red hot engines that is looking to land. Instead it flies off, and a blue figure with spiky hair and wide set eyes, an alien, ambles in from the left, quickly joined by a man with a grey bowler hat. He looks like a human, dressed in jeans and a white top. The huge spaceship that was drifting near the moon earlier seeks to land and eases down onto the surface in a billow of dust. It pauses briefly while the figures stare at it, and takes off again, flying up and out of sight. The spaceship with the fiery engines returns, and its engines go out as it parks itself next to the two beings. Darkness creeps in from the left, slowly enveloping the spacecraft and eventually the two beings. In the same darkness, a new scene unfolds. A strange, sad-looking creature shaped like a tree moves away from a metallic creature on wheels, and a red letter T painted across the top. A figure somewhere between human and wide-set-eyed alien wanders in too, the characters coming forward then disappearing off screen one by one. A bald humanoid figure with sharp teeth 
a thin blue creature that looks like a sad balloon animal, and finally, a menacing Dalek appears right in the foreground. We fade back to the yellow hues of the moon, the blue alien with the spiky hair running along the ground, quickly joined by the human in the bowler hat. They arrive at a spacecraft, one of the ones that was circling the moon, which again touches down in a cloud of dust that fills the screen. We see the moon planet from far away again, the spacecraft, perhaps with these two beings on it, taking off from the surface and flying away slowly into the depths of space. Karen Hill School, Refusus 11, appears on screen, against a starry background with a bright sun in the corner. A tiny, earth-like planet, complete with red moons circling it, slowly rises upwards. Ribbons of yellow light snake out from the sun and down towards the planet, endlessly flowing and dissolving as soon as they touch the surface. On the planet, we see tall pyramid buildings with ladders up to them on tall thin legs suspended in the air. A stick man with glasses and a top hat bounces in from the left, then disappears as the sun's rays snake down and touch him. The rays stop as soon as he has disappeared. The taller stick man walks in awkwardly from the right, his limbs are too long for him, and disappears once again as the sun's rays touch him. A similar looking stick man walks in from the left, the same thing happening, him fading into nothing as soon as the yellow ribbons of light reach him. Another stick man with hat and cane, perhaps the same one, walks in from the right. Are the rays transporting or moving these people? and is erased by the sun's beams. Cutting to a grassy background, strange creatures in the shape of footprints, faces and all of the toes and outstretched arms appear on the grass as if someone was walking there. They fade and more brown footprints appear, different ones, and each set heads in a different direction. The first set of footprints continue towards us until we see the awkwardly tall stick man standing alone. The footprints start to slowly approach him, gradually reaching him and catching up with him. He jumps up into the air and waves his arm in fright, then hurriedly walks away from them. The stick man with the hat and cane stands alone in the grass. The footprints have got him too. He is frightened, exclaiming and flapping his arms, hurrying away on his much shorter legs. A new stick person stands near the front, hair and pigtails are either side of her head. The first set of footprints are pushing a huge rock. Has there been an invisible person this whole time? Slowly towards her. The stick figure waves her arms as we zoom into her face. She looks confused, with a scribbled mouth and rolling eyes, then back out to the scene. The rock is pushed closer and the figure flaps her arms again. The footsteps push the rock, only a few feet away from the figure, closer and closer and closer until it is right next to her. The close-up shot of her face flashes across the screen, and the footsteps continue, running back the way they came, meeting each other, then crossing over each other as they move in different directions. We are back to the pyramid buildings on legs, the sun's rays snaking down slowly. This time as they touch the ground, the second set of footprints meet them. The stick figure with the hat and cane emerges from them, walking away. The first set of footprints start moving too, the sun's rays on their way to meet them, and the tall awkward stick figure emerges. They must have been turned invisible by the sun. Zooming back out to the starry galaxy, the sun's rays gently move toward the earth planet again. The earth and moon start to flicker and fade eventually turning invisible from the rays. A dark purple planet with blue diamond shards on it appears in a dark sky, the words Elon Primary, Midnight, appearing on screen. Grey spacecraft slowly approach the planet amongst piercing blue stars, one ship faster than the others, which circles the planet, jet engines hot and glowing. This one flies away, whilst the others move closer. They pause at the edges, and then the faster rocket flies past again, closer than before.
we see the interior of a spacecraft, the purple planets and gold shooting stars visible through the windscreen, the control desk stretched out before us. There are all manner of panels, buttons and switches, a speedometer, food supply chart, fuel gauge, height charts, eject buttons. The planets float and stars fly through the windscreen. Back in the dark sky, the purple planet gently bobs up and down, the spacecraft still surrounding it. We are met with a blue-green sea in which a pink fish swims, changing direction and pausing. Small purple rock-like creatures with one peering eye each gently float along the bottom of the ocean. Across a grey background, strange purple plants grow and spin and a stick man walks in from the left. He quickly moves across the screen, exiting at the right. Back in darkness, it appears we are looking through a window at various stick people and purple shapes that grow closer, perhaps through the blue diamond shards that cover the outside of the planet. The stick man walks through another room, in a hurry to keep moving. A humanoid figure walks behind one of these windows, with spiky hair and glasses, a pink dress and a grey hat. Suddenly back to the surface, a stick figure, maybe the same one, swims back and forth in a deep purple sea, a space or maybe water ship emerging from the left. Welcome to Midnight. If you please scan the QR code on your Midnight app on your phone to see if we if to see if we've actually got top one and like all the other stuff. Hope you have a good day. This is a hotel or resort of some kind, a sign with the word rooms and an arrow appearing on screen. We see a hand scan a ticket in the machine. A blue blob figure emerges back in the purple sea, suddenly phasing into a large, aggressive looking blue rooster, a skull and crossbones on its wing. The rooster kicks the ground, scratching it with his feet, then phases again into a tall rabbit person with spiky teeth who waves its arms threateningly. This creature morphs into a winged bunny with one tooth and an eye patch, who looks a lot friendlier despite holding a sword, and waves before morphing into a muscular blue creature with jelly beans for one hand, a cupcake for another, and a Lego brick for a head. This creature springs toward the camera before we zoom out to the purple planet, stick figures visible behind the blue shards. The planet rotates slowly, blue creatures of all sorts visible on its surface, and surrounded by blinking blue moons and meteorites. A bright yellow sun fills the screen, slowly spinning away to reveal a colourful galaxy with hand-drawn planets and stars filling the space. The words St. Andrew's School, Sense Sphere appear on screen. The sun shrinks and fades, and another sun follows its path as we zoom in to one of the planets. We are in a spaceship, the only light from a spotlight in pitch blackness and a huge spider drops from the ceiling. It climbs upwards as green eyes blink outside. The spotlight moves and another spider with hundreds of legs is revealed, climbing on its web. These must be the Zilgans. We see a crack in the wall and the light illuminates a spider retreating and another bug scurrying across the floor. Out of the window of the spaceship, a sticky looking bug with long legs dangles and a robotic spider sits on the control desk, the spotlight showing blinking green eyes in the murky blackness. Light streams into a cave and the camera pans down to reveal orange aliens standing and waving with smiling faces, cracks and ridges etched into the cavern. A green eye has grown out of the wall and looks at the audience as the figures wave one by one. A blue starry sky fills the screen and the words St. Andrew's School Crop Tor appear. A grey and fiery red planet, its edges glitching and morphing into different shapes, spins into focus. The morphing changes each time, beautiful patterns forming like oil paintings.
transported to a mountain scene. We see lots of individual houses with smoke coming out of the chimneys, the sky turning orange. Individual mountains with volcanoes emit smoke, the sun rising behind them. Three blue aliens stand in the middle of a mountain range, quickly morphing into different shapes and forms like the planet before them. An angry blue blob alien, a group of friendly aliens standing together, a multicolored aggressive figure. Heat pours from the mountain, red and orange and fiery. We zoom out to the gray and red planet, glitching. It explodes into shards, each pulsing and morphing at the edges. The morphing alien settles on the angry blue blob alien, which is revealed from this explosion and drifts off into space. In a new star-speckled galaxy, the words Anna Ritchie School, Chloris, appear on screen. The sky spins very slowly. We see a green planet start to emerge from the background, moons and meteorites caught in its orbit, spinning around it. It grows closer. wandering about. Some looked like green dragons, another like a cat with spiky teeth and leaves for hair. One of them, an angry looking red ridged dragon alien, somersaults and spins rapidly along the ground in front of the trees, off screen then back on. Perhaps this is a wolfweed. Another dragon like alien somersaults too, spinning with the other, whilst a more cat like dragon alien jumps from treetop to treetop. We see one of the spinning dragon aliens rolling down a hill to a clearing. The spinning dragon alien lands facing us with six red eyes, sharp teeth and green spiky fronds growing from it. It blinks, its eyes moving at different speeds and keeps spinning away, followed by small green bug aliens which roll down the hill after it. Red aliens that look like ants stand around a campfire, brown buildings with straw roofs behind them, a patch of grass close by. They blink and wave at us, and the campfire flickers, their antennas twitching. Perhaps these are the native Chlorians. We zoom in closer on their expressions. One with an open mouth and spiky teeth raises its hand to its mouth. One waves at us, and another further away waves too, and the one at the front raises both arms to wave, mouth open and menacing. transported to a cloud in the starry sky, with a yellow diamond-like object shining brightly in the middle of the screen. Two of the red ant aliens stand on either side of it, as it emits bright blue, then red, then purple, then rainbow light. We zoom in closer, the light shifting and changing with beautiful colors. title card appears with the words, Thank you to Drake Music Scotland Associate Musicians, Rachel Mackinson, Iona Matheson, Francis Moore Collier, Abby Sinner. Thanks to all the pupils and staff involved in all of the schools, Aboyne Primary, Alford Academy, Anna Ritchie School, Karen Hill School, Ellen Academy, Ellen Primary, St Andrew School, Westfield School. Thanks to Tom Swift Animator, Adam Usmani, Sound Engineer. Thanks to Drake Music Scotland team, thanks to Aberdeen Shire Council, this project was funded by Creative Scotland's YMI Fund through Aberdeenshire Council. This project was inspired by BBC Ten Pieces Doctor Who. The logos for all of the above organisations appear on screen. 
The logo for Drake Music Scotland is the last image we are left with against a starry sky.